Well, that was quick. It's official. Murat Huznadinov signs his entry-level contract, and as soon as he can get all of the other paperwork taken care of, he is joining the Minnesota Wild. We'll discuss his best fit, as well as who the heck comes out of the lineup when he gets here. All that and more on today's episode of Locked on Wild. We are your team every day. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham, and this is Locked On Wild. Good everybody. Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. We are your team every day. And we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, Dan Bradley of the Pod Snipe and Selly podcast joins us to discuss the big news of the day. Murat Huznadinov signing his entry-level contract, and he will be joining the Wild here hopefully within the next week. We'll talk timetable. We'll talk best fits in the lineup. And the million-dollar question that has been debated hotly over the uh, last week or so, especially on Locked on Wild. Who comes out of the lineup? My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, joined as mentioned by Dan Bradley of the Pod Snipe and Sally podcast. Dan, glad to have you on the show. First off, I know we have been discussing doing this here for a little bit and uh, glad to get you in on a very noteworthy news day for the Minnesota Wild. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Seth. I, I tried to plan it out this way just so that we could get the Huznadinov signing today, have something to talk about when uh, we got connected to, to do this show. And uh, nice as well to get to do a show other than the uh, the draft show with the, the soda pod that we've done for the last couple of years and uh, get to do a little crossover this way as well. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and let's let's dive right into the big stuff. Murat Huznadinov signing his entry-level contract and beyond the paperwork and whatever it takes to get his work visa and get him here to North America, uh, it's he's he's on the way. The missile or the rocket or whatever you want to call him. I think the rocket is actually his nickname. Um, he's on his way. And so just give me your reaction first off, Dan, to hearing the news. It seemed like something that we figured would be quick after his season in Sochi was done. But me personally, I don't know if I thought it was going to happen this quickly. I mean, Wednesday after a season is done on Sunday, that's, that's a pretty quick turnaround. That's really quick. And especially after the Russia contract fiascos that the wild have had to deal with in the past, Kirill Kaprizov in particular, getting a player of Husnadinov's caliber that quickly after the season ends, as you mentioned, um, so she could have held on to him until April 30th and really messed things up for the wild. Um, with the signing today, he's going to end up uh, burning a year of his entry level contract, which frankly, I'm okay with. Um, he needs some experience and especially knowing that we have 15 million dead cap this year and next year, the expectation isn't, you know, that this team is going to compete for a Stanley Cup, nice as that would be this year and next year. Getting him in, getting him adjusted to the North American ice, getting him around the team, around the players, around the organization is going to be huge. Um, and especially once uh, Liam Ugarin and Danila Yurov are coming over as well. This is kind of the first wave of that, okay, Judd Brackett, have you, how have you put this team together? Wild fans should really be excited about getting who's Nadinov here. Yeah, it's it's one of those that is just it gives everybody something to keep an eye on throughout the rest of the season, because uh, I, I look at some of the things and we'll get to more of Bill Guerin's comments here uh, later in the episode. But um, a couple of things that lead me to believe and I've kind of gone back and forth on this. 
couple of things that lead me to believe that he is going to come here and he's going to get a fair shake to kind of see what he's got at the NHL level. Number one, burning the first year of the entry level contract. You're not going to do that for somebody who's just going to to just going to be here and just be like uh he's going to come here and he's going to learn how we do it. Um you don't do that in that case. Like if if you just want him to kind of get acclimated, that's what training camp is for next season. So that's one. Um the fact that he got number 22 which was announced by the team that's another. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, that... let's let's talk about that for a second here. Number twenty-two, uh, which I'm sure is going to give a lot of people, um, it, it's going to get some eyes popping uh, with him out there with that number because it turns out his predecessor at that spot was notable. It, it, all of his his predecessors at that number, not just Kevin Fiala, but uh, before that Nino Niederreiter, and then before him Cal Clutterbuck. So that's a, a pretty big number for Minnesota. So um, I have no doubt that Husnadinov can live up to the expectations with those numbers. It's, it's kind of like 24 uh, as well with, with Bugard and then Matt Dumba and now Bogosian. Um, but yeah, I, I hadn't seen that he was going to wear number 22. So I was already trying to think, okay, line charts, you know, 97, where are you putting everybody here? What's his number going to be? Probably something really high just because that's what they do with the, the newer players, give them the higher jersey numbers. Uh, but then to see that he's getting 22, I mean, that's that's about as on the nose as it could be to say this really is going to be a, a new era of Minnesota Wild Hockey. Stop bringing up Fiala. There wasn't a chance we were going to keep him. Couldn't have made it work. Be happy who's Nadinov's here. I, I kind of like that. That's that's my initial reaction to hearing that news. Bruso jokingly said on Twitter that Danila Yurov's number is also 22 with that like concerned face emoji. And I'm like, <laughs> well, maybe they'll just give him maybe they'll just give Marat like 11 next year. Maybe they'll maybe they'll try to exercise that demon, too. When Yurov gets up here, they, they can yeah. always change him around and whoever scores first gets to keep it. I like that. If, uh, if if Marat gets a hat trick in his first game, um, he then he can keep it. Then he can go. He can go into the single digits for all I care. Like, yeah, just, or just two. Keep it simple. Yeah, I like that. Uh, so those two things are are kind of pushing me towards the direction that he's going to get a good opportunity to play. And, you know, the other thing that I think is a cool angle about this is this is Kirill Kaprizov is now kind of being looked at as like the the leader for these guys. You've got who's the Dinov. You've got Danila Yurov, who's going to be another one. And, you know, Russo and Joe Smith broke it down in pretty lengthy detail for the athletic. But if you were looking for a, a maybe a few players that could sway a guy to sticking around. This is what the wild are hoping is that this group of players is able to come here and make a big enough impact to convince Kirill Kaprizov to stick around. And he certainly seems like he is excited to lead these guys and to be kind of the mentor for them as they get acclimated at the NHL level. Yeah. Russo and Joe Smith have both reported saying that, you know, Kaprizov has been texting Huznadinov every day for the last couple of weeks um, just to kind of help foster that relationship there and see what he needs as he's getting ready to arrive. Um, and Kaprizov had mentioned as well um, how important it was to have a, another Russian speaker on the team because he's the only one who speaks fluent Russian. Everybody else has probably picked up the cuss words by now, but that's about <laughs> it. You know, not too much more than that. Um but ha having those types of guys and someone that you can communicate that with, and even if it's something as simple as, Hey, you know, coach, coach said this, what does, what does that mean? And being able to translate it in Russian on the fly so that that gets picked up and understood rather than having to really slow everything and everybody down um, just kind of keeps everything moving faster as it goes as well. So I think that'll be, really big that we have now another Russian speaker on the team. And I have no doubt that she and Kaprizov are, you know, going to be peas in a pod shortly after uh, who's Nadinov gets here. And 
uh, the Russian movement. You know, it worked pretty well for Detroit in the 90s. Could work pretty well for us, too, here. That's the hope. I I certainly am crossing my fingers that uh, all these guys can come here and have a, a good impact. Now, that's not to say that, like, I, I had to... I had to laugh. Uh, I saw on Wild Facebook that there were a couple of people that were under the assumption that because he got number 22, that he's going to be in the lineup against the Nashville Predators tomorrow night. That's that'll be tight. Yeah, that that's a tight window to get your your work visa to get here. Yeah, get a foremost. plane ticket, your lodging set up. So it's probably not going to happen there, but we will talk a little bit about when we could potentially see who's Nadine off. We'll also talk about Bill Guerin's comments. And there was an interesting paragraph in uh, Russo's article regarding the trade deadline that really caught my eye and leads me down a particular path as to who might come out of the lineup when who's Nadine off is here. Because not only is he coming, but Marcus Foligno and Pat Maroon are going to be back as well. And so we'll do a little stat check for the guys that would represent the bottom six. All that's coming up on today's episode of Locked on Wild. We will continue after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. And as the weather continues to get nicer like 60 degrees in Minnesota this week. I know today was a little bit on the cool side, but rest of the week looks great. We're getting through the rest of the winter to spring, which means that before you know it, we are going to be full tilt into Major League Baseball season as well as summer concert season. And if you're looking for a great way to give the gift of music or the Minnesota Twins, you can head to Game Time where you will find absolutely zero stress when buying your tickets. How many of you have bought tickets to an event before and you show up to the venue the day of and you find that your seat view is obstructed? Nobody wants to deal with that hassle or that stress and Game Time has officially thrown it in the garbage. You don't have to worry about it for a second. Game Time offer also offers you last minute tickets plus flash deals and no hidden fees. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is also brought to you by FanDuel. You can get tons of buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. You can bet on all of your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Plus, you can bet on the beak line or the wrecker line, whatever you want to call them, having a big game against the Nashville Predators by taking a look at their anytime goal parlays. Uh, you can bet on the Minnesota Wild to win as well, and if that cashes, that's 150 bucks in your pocket. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to shoot your shot today. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For the everydayers, we're going to dive into the March schedule with Zach Zeman tomorrow. We'll take a look at the big games happening throughout the month of March. So make sure to tune in for that coming up tomorrow here on Locked on Wild. Dan Bradley of the Pod Snipe and Sally podcast joining us here today, continuing to talk about the big news today that Murat Husnadinov has signed his entry-level contract. Dan, let's get to know Husnadinov a little bit better here uh, for the listeners that maybe aren't as familiar with what he brings to the table. Now, 
you look at his numbers with Sochi this season, he had 20 points in 40, 49 games, six goals, 14 assists. We should preface the fact that Sochi was real bad this year. Horribly bad. That's this year. that's generous. Real bad is, <laughs> is generous. That was not a good team. Um, and even with some of the players that they have on that squad, like you would have thought they might have been a little better. No, not not this year. Matt Faye Mitchkov, even um, on that team, one of the top players from last year's draft. Um, and just a, a dud year for pretty much everybody, but still a, a decent year overall for his Danito. And you look at um, what he did in 2022-2023. He had 41 points in 63 games for uh, Ska St. Petersburg, much better team. And, you know, it's interesting, too, because I was just searching through the Twitter sphere or the X universe, whatever you want to call it these days. And, you know, we we forget, too, about some of the things that happen with these KHL teams is you often see if you are at the end of your current contract, you may see a little bit of a minutes reduction or a lot or aligned emotion to kind of help nudge you in the direction of, uh, of signing a new deal. And so who's Nadinov dealt with a little bit of that too, throughout the course of the season. Now he didn't end up signing. In fact, he had his agent pursue contract termination, which led to signing the CLC, but there was some of that going on too this year. Yeah, thankfully it wasn't as bad as Danil Yurov getting nine seconds of ice time for an entire game. Oh, and he scored in those nine <laughs> seconds, but they sat him down the rest of the way. They're like, oh, he's, he's playing too well. Can't have him out there. You know, thankfully that wasn't the case. In fact, taking it even one step further, um, Huznadinov was one of the captains for Sochi this year as well, which um, was looking at that, that Sochi roster. There were 29 players on that team who were older than Huznadinov this year. And at 21 years old, getting a letter for a professional club like that, to me, speaks a lot to his game, his work ethic, his attitude on and off the ice, um, and just what kind of teammate he is as well, that he's somebody that guys are going to and looking to as an example and as a leader. So seeing that that's also kind of the movement within the Wild organization you know, uh, Russo has said time and time again, he thinks Brock Faber is going to be the next captain of the Minnesota Wild. Having some supplemental young leadership in a player like who's Nadinov, that's a big get. And anytime you have young guys who are showing that they can step up when those types of roles are put in front of them, that's always a healthy thing for an organization. Some other things that of note for who's Nadinov in regards to him getting here is uh, this is in Russo's write up today. The wild will burn the first year of his contract and have him report to Minnesota. Once his U S work visa and immigration papers are complete. The process on that paperwork has begun during that time period. The wild will be able to designate who's Nadinov to non roster status, according to an NHL source, while his prorated average annual value will count against the cap. Not an issue because Jared Spurgeon is done for the year. So you've got like five plus million dollars to play with. So that's not a problem. The This will buy the wild time to create roster room. As of now, they're at the maximum 23 players. So to fit who's Nadinov on the roster, they will need to place a player on waivers, trade a player, or sustain an injury that would require the player to be placed on injured reserve. If for some reason who's Nadinov's work visa isn't complete until after the March 8th trade deadline, all of this is moot because teams can exceed the 23 player roster limit after the deadline as long as they're camp compliance. Again, not an issue. He would still be playoff eligible, though, as long as his NHL contract is signed. And according to Bill Guerin, he expects who's Nadinov to play and be able to help, but that they'll quote, do the right thing for the team, whatever that means. Garen understands that this team is battling for a playoff spot and that coach John Hines will go with the players he most trusts. See that this is the, that's the interesting sentence here. And we'll, we'll segue more into this to end the show. 
the guys that he trusts are the players that I don't feel like are going to be impacted by this at all because you're talking Kaprizov, you're talking Boldy, Erickson Eck, um, Matt Zuccarello, Marco Rossi, to an ex- although Marco Rossi's playing time has dropped. He's kind of starting to hit that rookie wall, too. Where yeah. It's at that point in the season where it's okay, an 82-game grind. It's a big step up from, from juniors and even AHL where it's 70 games. So he's starting to hit that a little bit, too. Well, we, we saw Faber go through a stretch like that where he just had a few games in a row where he did not look great. He started to, he started to push through it. So mm-hmm. the hope is that Rossi will do the same thing, but like, this isn't Dean where the players that were most trusted were Freddie Goudreau and yeah, Ryan. Fred, Freddie's not getting 23 minutes a night under John Hines. No, not at all. So it will be interesting to see, um, how this plays out. I I've got a few more comments that I want to get to from this article, as well as looking at some of the guys that should come out of the lineup. So we will talk about all that as we finish today's episode of locked on wilds after this. Today's episode of locked on wild is brought to you by eBay motors, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. One final segment of today's episode of Locked and Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked and Wild your first listen each and every day. Seth Topal joined by Dan Bradley of the Pod Snipe and Selly podcast. Dan, give us just a little bit of info on the Pod Snipe Selly podcast. Yeah, we've been doing the show for about three years now. This started as a, a show that had kind of a betting theme to it. Uh, earlier on, we've kind of gotten away from that lately. Um, we were partnered with a, a organization that really pushed that betting content, and uh, we've since broken off from them. Um, but we do a, a show pretty much weekly. Uh, it's usually Tuesday nights at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, um, where we talk all things NHL. And it's not just a, a Minnesota Wild thing, but we're looking at all over the league and celebrating player mi- milestones. Um, looking at the hot button issues, you know, what's what's the appropriate way to score an empty net goal? Um, because clearly a slap shot is going to draw a reaction. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> things things like that. Um, you know, we, we usually have a segment that we'll do at the end. Uh, we call it two minutes for roughing. And me or my, my co-host, Joel, who is a Blackhawks fan, which makes things interesting at times. Interesting dynamic. Yeah, it certainly is. Um you know, it will, will take two minutes to just rough up whatever topic we want. Um, you know, this, this past year, it's been roughing up the Chicago bears and everything to, to get the Blackhawks, Cotter Bedard and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, but we, we have a lot of fun. Um, it's, uh, we'll do shows throughout the off season as well and, um, keep coming up with fun stuff there. But, uh, I, I am in awe of how you continue to come up with daily shows and you've always got <laughs> daily content and knowing the grind that it can be sometimes like it can be pulling teeth to come up with stuff. And and I've mentioned this to, to Joel and to our listeners too, that um, your ability to, to come up with topics like this daily, it just, it blows my mind. So hats off to you. Appreciate that. It, it took me, it took me a, a little bit to get started. 
Like, especially when I, when I first took over, it was during the season that the wild played Vegas took over with about 30 games into the season. And obviously during the season, you've got, you know, games you can recap. So that was an, that was a good kind of get my feet wet. When that first off season hit, I was like, what now? Mm -hmm. Yep. But it's just, (laughs) it's just one of those things. Like I, I'm somebody who will, if an idea pops into my head, I'll kind of sit on it, refine it a little bit because it's always like, I'm always looking at like, Hey, is this an angle that I can break into, you know, multiple topics, multiple questions. And just through the sheer grace of, of having done this as long as I have now, um, it's a challenge to like, what are we going to do today? And a lot of times, like today, when we got the news that uh, practice and media availability were canceled for today, I was like, okay, that, uh, that may not be good. So just wait it. And then it's this. And you're like, oh, sweet. I get to talk about, I get to talk about an exciting thing. So yeah, I, you, you get the uh, no practice, no media availability. That's a, oh, something's going on behind yeah. closed doors. Usually that's, that's rarely a good sign, but today it is. So we'll, we'll definitely take that. We will for sure. Uh, Dan, let, here's a couple of other comments from Russo's article. Um, I just want to get to this paragraph and then I have another one that kind of intrigued me too. Uh, the wild envision who's Nadinov developing into a middle six center and think he is ready for the NHL. He has 162 regular season games and 32 playoff games of experience in a men's league and plays a mature 200 foot game. These next two sentences, I want you to tell me if this reminds you of anybody currently on the wild roster. He's versatile enough to play up and down the lineup, is solid away from the puck, is very fast, a ball of energy, a 50% faceoff guy in the KHL, and has the skill to make plays. You know, we heard a lot of those similar comments when uh, we acquired one Freddie Gaudreau. And uh, you had mentioned as well as as to who comes in or out of the lineup when Huznadinov gets here. Um, I, I hate to say it, but I think Gaudreau's ears have got to be perking up a little bit hearing that type of description and knowing that this is a similar type of role to what he has played and will probably continue to play for the while down the stretch here. Um, but yeah, Huznadinov, he can, he can play – penalty kill for you. I think eventually, you know, at, at this point of the year, you're not going to slot him in on PK2 during a playoff push. Um, not unless, you know, 10 guys ahead of him are hurt. That's the only way, which knockout would, you know, we don't please, need, please don't happen. We've already had but, enough of that. We don't need any yeah, more we, of it. We got through the the injury bug earlier this year. Let's, let's keep it away. Um, but I think that is somewhere that eventually that's the type of role that he's going to take over. Um, you know, I, I think you look at Jewel Erickson, you look at Marco Rossi, organizationally speaking, those are probably going to be your top six centers moving forward. Unless you decide you're going to move Rossi to the wing and try and give him some more space to create there. Um, I, I really think his, his fit is probably at center. So that does leave Husnadinov to the third forward line. Um, but the way that he plays, you're going to want him on the ice as much as you can get him there. So whether you're trying to roll three lines, whether you're balancing with four and, and mixing things in there, I think eventually that that 13 to 15 minutes, um, that's possible mm-hmm. by the end of this season. But it's not going to come right away. I mean, you, you had mentioned earlier with the the paperwork and the visa and getting everything sorted for coming over here. I mean, we could be looking at after the trade deadline before Husnadinov gets into the lineup because he's still got to get over here and get practices in with the team. And if you don't have scheduled practices, it's really tough to get that chemistry. It's tough to get 
oriented with everything. There's going to be a learning curve when he gets here. I think, you know, that people talked about, is he going to be there for the Nashville game? Sure, maybe the Nashville game on, what is it, like March 10th or something like that? Yeah. Down, or, yeah, March 10th. Um, that, to me, is a bit more realistic of a timeline for when he might get here. And even looking at the games before that, you know, you probably want to get him into a game at home, so you're not going to play him at Arizona, at Colorado. March 3rd against San Jose, that's that's pushing it. The games before that, Nashville and St. Louis on the road, probably not going to happen. Home against Nashville on the 10th, maybe. You know, uh, home against Arizona. Anaheim, that's probably, for me, I, I don't want him to get the same treatment that Jesper Wallstead got when he got called up. Yeah. Thrown to the Wolves against Dallas. Um, and looking at those other teams, like you, if this is truly a playoff team, you have to beat Nashville. Yep. You have to beat St. Louis. The The standings won't necessarily show it. Those, those are four point games because you can't be giving away the points to the teams that are directly ahead of you. So you're not going to throw him in for what Garen is still at this point, seeming like it's, it's must win games. And looking at the standings as a whole, uh, you know, Arizona's either their owner, or their GM said something like, we're done. We're out. We're, yeah. we're sellers. We're, we're gone. That's, that's the team directly behind the wild in the Western conference standings right now. So you are right on that chopping block of, are you in or out? If they are still truly all in as Garen seems to be pushing that narrative that yes, we're still in and we're still trying to compete. I don't know that we're going to see who's Nadinov for a while. And it might take, you know, it might take a losing streak going into the trade deadline before we see him. It may take being mathematically eliminated. That's a possibility too. Be So the, like if you, here's how I see, here's two ways that I can see this playing out. If you are, if you win the Nashville and the St. Louis games, which would get you back, which would keep you in this, in this race and give you a little confidence heading into the trade deadline. I think the quick move is to send Jake Lucini down and to get Murat into that roster spot. And then that's, that's your roster. If they lose those two games, then I think you see, which is why Garen even today said that he still didn't really know the direction they were taking for the trade deadline, hoping that that gets revealed within the next week or so. If you lose those two games to Nashville and St. Louis, then you're like 10 points out with 22 games to play. And it's not that you can't, you know, tie. But here's the other thing. If you tie, you're not in. Because you have fewer wins than Nashville and St. Louis. So you have to have more points than them. Not only that, but then the next tiebreaker would be their head-to-head -head results. And if you've lost those games, even if you do end up somehow tied with them on the, the regulation and overtime wins, you're still going to have lost those games head-to-head -head and be out in that regard too. So yeah. we're going to learn a lot about this team in the next two games. Yes, it, that's that's going to determine the trajectory the rest of the season. And but I, I'm fully prepared for the wild to split because that would just be about the most on brand way to do it. A hundred percent. It's just to just to be in it enough to where the decision does not get made. I wanted to end on this because this has been pointed out as to Freddie's bread and butter like. Well, he's winning faceoffs at a 51.3% clip, which amongst the qualified, Vinny Letary is at 51.9, but he's only taken like 50 faceoffs. Freddie Goudreau's at 51.3. Jewel Erickson Eck is next at 49%. I'll put this in a little perspective here, though. Jewel Erickson Eck has taken almost 800 more faceoffs this season than Freddie Goudreau. And so Goudreau has a 51% face-off winning percentage in slightly below 400 face-offs, which is fewer than Jewel Eriksson-Eck. It's fewer than Ryan Hartman. 
it is fewer than Marco Rossi, and it is slightly more than Connor Dewar. And so, like, yes, he is winning the faceoffs. He's not taking a ton. And beyond that, his Corsi 4 percentage, which, again, for those who are casual in the analytical world, such as myself, Corsi 4 percentage is the impact that you have with the puck when you're on the ice. If you're above 50%, that means you typically possess the puck more. If you're below 50%, that means your opponent possesses the puck more. Freddie Goudreau is 25th on the team with a 45.4% Corsi 4 percentage. And I can take, I, I about lost the audience in the postcast last night going through these, but I have found a way to elevate it slightly. Freddie Goudreau has two points in his last 22 games and has 23 shots in that span. And so my final contribution to this show is another tidbit from Michael Russo's trade tracker article in regards to would trade if there's a taker, Mm -hmm. Freddie Goudreau. This has been a brutal season for Goudreau, who has three goals and 11 points in 47 games. He's gone 23 games without a goal, dating back to December 31st. Goudreau, typically a strong two-way center, is a positive player, as you'll find around, but he's admitted to being frustrated at times. His season got off to a rough start with an injury in Game 3 against Toronto on a hit by Ryan Reeves. Goudreau and former Wild coach Dean Evason had a special relationship, and the 30-year-old center was used in a Swiss Army knife-type role. Goudreau has played mostly bottom six minutes the past couple of months, getting his first shot back at center in 18 games on Tuesday against Carolina. That lasted two periods, by the way. Goudreau is in the first of a five-year deal with a $2.1 million cap hit, so that could make some teams pause at the deadline. He also has a modified no-trade clause, 15-team no-trade list. More likely than not, Goudreau will still be with the Wild after the deadline, but teams looking for a versatile forward who can play in all situations could come calling. I'm calling it right now. Murat Huznadinov is taking that center spot effective next season. I think Freddie Goudreau will be traded in the offseason. Are you ready for the real kicker on the faceoff stats? I was looking this one up while while you were mentioning the the numbers and percentages. So on the year, uh, Freddie Gaudreau has taken uh, 398 faceoffs. More than a quarter of that has been offensive zone, and about half of that is neutral zone. So when you're counting on him to win a faceoff late, you're trying in the offensive zone more than in your own end which is where you really need the face-off wins so that you can get the puck back. It's the numbers just aren't there and and don't justify, you know, you and I were talking about this yesterday, how many former wild players have more points this year than Freddie Gaudreau. And you're talking guys like Nick Bugstad. You're talking guys like Ryan Donato. You're talking Kalen Addison. Um, You're talking about, Freddie having one more goal than Ryan Reeves this year, having the same number of goals as Nico Sturm this year. I I mean, there's a chance that he's still hurt. And we talked about, you know, with Kaprizov when he was still recovering from the the Logan Stanley hit, Um, you know, it it could uh, Freddie Gaudreau still be dealing with something like that. Maybe. Um, But if that's the case, Take a seat for a couple games. Get right. Get healthy. Get with the trainers. Do what you have to do. Go on injured reserve so we have the roster spot open for who's the dean of, and we can deal with the situation there. It, it makes so much sense. Like I, I feel like I'm connecting, pulling all of the strings. You know the the um, you know always sunny bit where he's <laughs> he's pulling all the yarn and, and the push pins on the board and trying to explain conspiracy theories i mean it's it's that same thing like it it all makes sense and yet here we are 
ready to keep trying to do the same thing that we've done for the last couple of years and it hasn't worked and trying to do it again and run it back. It's, it's so frustrating as a fan sometimes. Yeah. Uh, it is. And thankfully this is a safe space for people to let out those frustrations. I, this is, this is no, I, I was going to say this is Dr. Topes time. Um, but now that's going to be a thing that'll stick in the comments. Oh, I like <laughs> I, why did I, why did I even say it? Dr. Topes. What's uh, can, just, can you give us a prescription for some copium? Should have just kept my mouth shut. That's going to become a reoccurring bit in the postcasts. It is. It's okay. That's it, fine with me. You know, you got to have bits. You mm-hmm. know, we, we do the same thing on pod snipe Sally doing stuff for the bit and it, it just works. So Dr. Topes, I, I like it. That's going to stick. I'm going to end up opening the, uh, I'm going to end up opening podcasts from or postcasts from now on with the doctors in. the doctor will see you now. There oh. you go. Oh, I like where this is going. You're, you're oh, going to have some see? fun with this one. This is why, this is why we brought you on Dan is to, to create a new bit. I love this and uh, appreciate the time here today. We'll definitely have to do this more than just between now and the end of the season off season we'll uh we'll do this more often for sure absolutely you and alex micheletti always have a standing invitation anytime you guys want to hop on pod snipe silly um more wild fans to dunk on joel for being a hawks fan i mean it will we'll take as much of that as we can get so uh, yeah. thanks again for having me and uh thanks to denny as well for getting the uh, the fans together and united for for this bit that was a really good idea and it's uh always fun to do these types of crossover shows as well and to get to know the, the lockdown wild listeners. So, yeah. And I, I should probably have premised at the beginning of the episode that that's originally how we got this connected. You just happen to have a, a podcast as well um, to be able to work that in. So it, this is, yeah, this, this is, was, this was as a fan more so than just, Hey, Dan yeah. has a podcast too. I mean, if you want to come check it out, cool. If you like it, great. If not, you know, it, it is what it is. But we know that your audience is uh, strictly wild fans for the most part. So we we will gladly let you run your thing with the, the wild show. And if you want to come listen to non-wild hockey talk from time to time um, and, and dunk on the Hawks, we're, we're here for that. Dan, appreciate the time. Listeners, make sure to hit the like button here on today's episode. Make sure to subscribe and uh, make sure to make your appointments for tomorrow night's Lockdown Wild postcast where the doctor will hear your thoughts. If it's a big wild win, we'll, we'll go, we'll be into it. If it is a game that the wild are not able to, uh, to win, we'll be there too. win or lose. We got you covered for another Locked on Wild postcast coming up tomorrow night as well. Make sure to catch tomorrow's episode with Zach Zeman. And make sure if you miss out on any episodes, you hit us up on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any breaking Minnesota Wild news or episodes throughout the week. We've got new episodes for you every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.